What's up everyone, Ultra League is starting tomorrow, so today I'm showcasing some teams to get you ready for it. Ultra League is filled with Excel Pokemon and Legendaries, which may be hard to get for some of you, so I've made sure to include some teams without Excel Pokemon or Legendaries as well, so there's something in here for everyone. Starting with the tried and true duo of Dragonite and Cobalion. Two of these have been ran together for seasons by many trainers to great success, as they just cover each other extremely well. Dragonite runs Dragon Breath, Dragon Claw and Super Power. Shadow recommended by the way, but not required. And with this moveset it just loses hard to any Ice, Rock or Fairy types. The first two, Cobalion just destroys and the third, Fairies. Cobalion doesn't straight up win generally, but it can get close enough to uh, put them in farm down range for something else. Cobalion, I recommend you run Double Kick, Sacred Sword and Stone Edge. Not Iron Head, Iron Head would make you a little better versus some fairies, but you're gonna be running Cobalion as a pivot in this team. And as a pivot, I think Stone Edge is a must. Otherwise, you're just gonna get walled by like a Charizard. Cobalion does quite well as a pivot in this team as the Pokemon you can generally expect to be like in the back, the really hard wall Cobalion. And if they do, like a fighter, for example, a Pharisian or a Swampert you don't do too great against, Dragonite can farm them down and get so much energy. And with that Dragon fighting coverage, like it can hit almost anything except for fairies super, super hard. To cover the fairies and a Pokemon like Cresselia a little harder in the back, you want to run something that uh, can beat those, like another Steel type, Registeel or Lowland Sand Slash do great there. I think Charizard is another uh, great option, because one problem with having the Steel types in the back is that let's say you have an Alolan Sand Slash in the lead, you're gonna want to switch into your Cobalion, and then it's still trouble, because if even if you win switch, if they have a shield advantage with Alolan Sand Slash later, they're gonna be able to take out both your Dragonite and your own Steel type, which is of course trouble. So in that case, you can run Charizard, would make you a little weaker versus Tapu Fini, for example. But as long as you get that on, on Cobalion, you should still be able to deal, it, deal with it with teamwork. So Charizard, another decent option. I think for a more neutral option, you could also go with Tapu Fini. It doesn't do like super well versus most fairies, but it does well enough. And uh, it also does fine versus most steel types, especially Alolan Sand Slash. It's like the one steel type that Dragonite really struggles with. Versus Registeel, you actually do pretty fine there because you do have super power. So Tapu Fini, another Pokemon I recommend. Though, in that case, Cresselia, of course, is a little more of, uh, of an issue, especially if it runs Grass Knot. But you should be able to deal with that with teamwork as well. So overall, it's a pretty solid team that you can either run as ABB with double steel or as a fairly neutral team uh, with like Tapu Fini in the back. Next up, another solid core of Alolan Sand Slash and Altered Giratina. Giratina covers for Alolan Sand Slash's weaknesses very, very well, especially its double weakness to fire and fighting is where Giratina really shines. And it also does pretty good versus ground types, which uh, Alolan Sand Slash also struggles with, of course. Then Giratina really doesn't want to see Charm, really doesn't want to see Ice types, and Sand Slash does very well there. Of course, I do struggle versus Obstacle and Scrafty, but really just hoping these are, these are not that common. They are going to be common. You might have some trouble, but Giratina still have some play there. On Alolan Sand Slash, you want to be running Shadow Claw, uh, Drill Run, and Ice Punch, by the way. That is the preferred move set. Also, Shadow Wise. I think Shadow is rated higher, but I always run regular, and it works very, very fine. However, if you have Shadow, I think it's probably the way. Just for like Reggie Steel, for example, Shadow just does much better there, as Juran will do extra damage because the Shadow bonus. And a Focus Blast would one shot anyway, I think. So the defense drop really isn't gonna matter uh, there because, you know, one shot this is a one shot. No. Nope. So Shadow, if you have it, but regular, still very, very fine. On Giratina, the, ma the, the moveset is a bit more up to you, I would say. You could. Definitely run Shadow Claw and Dragon Claw. I think that's mandatory. Uh, you're going to be running Giratina either as a lead or as a pivot in this core. And as a pivot for sure, you want uh, Shadow Claw, Dragon Claw. And then the third move is going to depend on what Pokemon you see most. I think Ancient Power is really nice to have for Pokemon like Charizard and Alolan Ninetales if you're expecting to see those. But if you see a lot of Registeels, 
Maybe go for Shadow Sneak. Maybe even Shadow Force. Personally, I'm not a fan of Shadow Force, but Shadow Sneak is nice coverage to have to hit against Registeel. Still, you are already resisting all Registeel's moves. So even if you don't have Shadow Sneak, it's still fine since you're uh, you're bringing Registeel low enough to where you can farm down with one of your other Pokemon later anyway, hopefully. Or at least put him into a range where one charge move from one of your other Pokemon can knock out. What those other Pokemon will be depends on where you put uh, A-Slash and Giratina. If you go A-Slash lead, Giratina pivot could, could work really well with a fighter in the back like Verizian. I think Verizian covers A-Slash very well too. Except for against fires. Fires, of course, are troublesome. But with the main fire being Charizard, a slash does pretty fine there anyway. So then I think having a cross like Verizian in the back is not too bad. And Verizian does very well uh, against like other fighters, most of them anyway, and against uh, water and ground types, which A slash also struggles with. So I think Verizian, good third. You can also go with Polyrath, Edmontop, uh, Koba no, not Cobalion, probably not Cobal Cobalion because they are super weak for opposing fighters. But yeah, Polyrath, Hitmontop, Machamp, I think very good third there. Could also do like an ABB line with Giratina in the lead. Then Registeel as a pivot to lure out most of uh, A-Slash's counters. And then have A-Slash in the back to sweep. I think that's also super solid. Another Steel type, like a Steelix, Galarian Stunfisk, Melmodel if you're feeling spicy. Greedent could also work there actually. Uh, could also be solid options. Do have some core breakers here though. Greedent, Obsagoon, Scrafty. Kind of troublesome, especially Obsidian and Scrafty do kind of destroy A Slash and uh, Giratina. But Giratina is so tanky and can drag a claw spam that you bring these low enough, I would say. And especially in the top line with a fighter in the back, you should be able to manage them. With the other team, the Reggie Steel, a little more trouble. But I mean, Reggie Steel can focus blast them to knock them out. So I think you do have some play uh, no matter what versus whatever you face. Uh, with this core as far as non-xl non-legendary teams go this squad right here might be the way running a flying type in the lead in charizard running wing attack dragon claw and blast burn or dragonite running dragon breath dragon claw and super power followed by a super bulky generalist as your pivot snorlax running a lick body slam and super power snorlax in this team is really gonna be an energy sponge also a nice bait out for grasses uh, to make swampert in the back really shine swampert of course absolute menace in the ultra loop still even after earthquake nerf it's gonna do really really well running mudshot hydro cannon and earthquake now this team of course no legendaries no super, super bulky Pokemon, no bulky excels, which means you could have some trouble with those very bulky Pokemon, especially something like Mandibus, which you don't have like a straight answer to on this team. But with teamwork, you should be able to play around it. Same counts for Pidgeot, really. So as well Tapu Fini, which your lead really, really struggles against. And Swamper doesn't do great against either, especially when shields are up. So if you see a Tapu Fini, definitely make sure to get shields down so you can Earthquake it with your Swamper later. And you should be able to play around it. Now again, this team, you might struggle a bit versus those very very bulky pokemon honestly that's just that's just the way it is gonna be always where you're running these non-xl non-legendary teams you're gonna struggle more than those that are running the top meta xl and legendary pokemon but do feel like you can play around it and don't feel discouraged if you can't make it work because these pokemon are solid investments anyway all four of these pokemon are extremely good if you can't make this team work because you get overrun by these Excel Pokemon, you can still use these Pokemon on like a different team later if you manage to get uh, Excel Pokemon or Legendaries built uh, on a different day. Hitmontop is a Pokemon I find very interesting in the current meta with the addition of Triple Axel. As now, with its moveset of Counter, Close Combat and Triple Axel, it's able to beat most other common fighters. Uh, either because you're doing super effective with your counters versus Pokemon like Scrafty, Obsigun, and what's the third? Oh, Cobalion. Or super effective with Triple Axel versus Verizian. This is still a close matchup, by the way. But especially with Shields up, Hitmontop should win that. That makes Hitmontop a very good counter for the Cobalt Steel Fighting Core, which makes it an excellent partner for Greedent, another buff Pokemon now that's gotten Mudshot. Greedent really struggles with fighters and most Steel types, uh, which makes Hitmontop just 
great uh, coverage for it. Green is going to be a pivot in this team. It really only gets hard walled by some fighters, which you can still chip a lot with body slam, crunch, uh, spam. And once you've brought them low enough, you can probably farm them down with Hitmontop or take them out with Cresselia. I did feel like I needed another solid anti-fighter in this team, so I went with Cresselia because it just destroys uh, most fighters, except for like Obsagoon or Scrafty. But this is where Hitmontop does like really, really well. If you're against like a Vrizian or a Cobalion, that's where you really want to use uh, Cresselia. Cresselia, I'm not too set on a moveset quite yet. You definitely want Moonblast, but you can either go Grass Knot for that extra damage versus Waters, or Future Sight uh, to hit Charizard. Personally, I would lean towards running Future Sight, as otherwise your Hitmontop Cresselia Core is gonna get uh, destroyed by a Charizard, to be honest. So, I think that's uh, what I would go with. Also, to go back to Greedent here, it is your pivot. If it brings out a fighting type, you already talked about that, just body slam spam, uh, you lose switch, and then you probably farm it down with Hitmontop or Cresselia. If there's a steel type coming in, this is amazing. You just crunch or body slams, uh, probably crunch spam as steel stake uh, resisted from uh, body slam of course so you crunch spam if it's a slash you win that if it's steelix it's gonna be close if it's reggie steel you could actually win the two shield there uh straight crunch if they focus blast so you could go for that potentially if you feel like you need switch but if they start zap cannoning and get the attack drop you should just not use your shields and let greedent go down farm down hip on top have a nice amount of farm and then because you lured out the steel with greedent Cresselia is just free, because Cresselia really only loses super hard uh, to steel types. A couple core breakers for this team, we already ch talked about Charizard, but with Future Side Cresselia that shouldn't be a huge issue. The Ghost though, Cover Grigas and Trevenant could be a little more troublesome, especially if you find them in the lead, or if your Greedent is gone, this could be quite a lot of trouble. But Cresselia still gets very, very close here. A couple Psycho Cuts advantage, and Cresselia is actually able to beat Trevenant in the one shield and make it very close in the zero. So I think with a little bit of teamwork, you should be able to take care of these ghosts too. So overall, I think this is going to be a pretty solid line. And then finally, a team that has two Pokeball. I'm just very excited to try out as they got their attacks upgraded during the latest update, Steelix and Golisapod. This team doesn't revolve around them though. It revolves around Trevenant, who got nerfed a couple of seasons back, which means it's now not as common anymore, which resulted in a lot of people running teams that are kind of weak to Trevenant. So I feel like if you can put it in the right spot, Trevenant can still do a lot of work. And I do that by pairing it with a very solid partner in Steelix, who, uh, you know, covers Trevenant quite well. Actually, there's still some core breakers, like Alolan Sandslash isn't amazing, but doable for Steelix. And Scrafty and Obstagon are very hard to deal with. So, actually, if you want to make this team, like, actually good, maybe run Registeel in the lead instead, or Galarian Stunfisk. They're probably better partners for Trevenant, but I like Steelix. I'm going to try this team out with Steelix. So, anyway, uh, if you really want to win, though, probably go with a different Steel. Cobalion could also work. Actually, Cobalion is too weak against Flyers, but some anti-Flyer in the lead does do fine there. Anyway, then we have Golisapod as a safe switch, which can lure out some of the common counters uh, tr to Trevenant, like the Flyers, especially Charizard, the Flyer you do see commonly uh, in the back, and Charizard comes into uh, Golisapod, that'd be amazing, as you do have Liquidation for it, to so basically one-shot Golisapod running Shadow Claw, Excisor, uh, Liquidation, by the way. I don't think there's any need for Aerial Ways. Should do fine enough versus most fighters. Uh, anyway, and you lure out the Trevenant answer. You take it out with Steelix later, and then Trevenant can hopefully sweep. It's a very, very simple team. Of course, like that, like I said, there are core breakers like Registeel, like Scrafty, like Obstagoon, like Alolan Sandslash. But I feel like they're all doable, especially if you go with Registeel instead of Steelix instead. But even with Steelix, I think it's pretty fine. So whilst I might not be 100% confident this team will work, I think it has a good chance to. That was it for today. I hope these teams will help you out. Let me know what you will be running in the Ultra League down in the comments below. Love to hear it. And I hope to see you in the next video. Good luck with your battle strainers.